Have you ever been curious about dark academia? Well, today we're going to be making some dark academia clothes. Hello lovelies, welcome to Amy of Melbourne if you haven't been here before and if you have, welcome back. My name's Amy, obviously. Today we're going to be doing some sewing. Specifically, we're going to be sewing a dark academia outfit. A couple of weeks ago, I posted a video where I looked at different patterns that would fit into a dark academia capsule wardrobe. And today I picked a couple of those patterns and I'm going to make them. As always with my videos, I try and be as size inclusive as possible. So the patterns featured today have over a 55 inch, 145, uh, hip measurement as a minimum. If you are interested in plus size sewing or plus size fashion, this one's also definitely for you. For this outfit, I wanted to make sure that every piece that I used would be able to be incorporated into my wardrobe. Now, my wardrobe tends to sit on the slightly gothic side, but I'm also a mum and I need things to be practical and mix and match. So the things that I've chosen to make are the Helen's Closet Dawson top with the mock turtleneck. Um, in Australia, we call them skivvies. So a mock skivvy neck, which is really fantastic pattern, or at least it looks like it. The only issue I have with that one is that Helen's Closet in my size range only does a D cup. If you want me to explain ever the um, different cup sizes and how that fitting part works of patterns, put a comment down below and let me know if you do. It only comes with a D cup size, so I have to do a small bust adjustment on that pattern. The next pattern is a vest pattern, and that is the Birch Vest by uh, Pattern Scout. I'm a little bit worried about this because it's a slightly more fitted garment. So it might need a bit of fitting help. It looks like it might be a bit long for me. So enjoy that. And then the final one actually is hopefully going to be one of my own patterns that I'm gonna release. I'm releasing patterns actually pretty soon. So if you're interested in testing or buying the patterns, that would be cool. <laughs> you can sign up to my mailing list by going to my website, which is linked down below. I'm gonna post like out there first if I need patent testers or when I need patent testers. So if you're interested in doing that, that would be really cool and I'd really appreciate it. Yes, I'm gonna do a full length A-line skirt with a wide waistband. But yes, that one's definitely going to need a lot because obviously I'm drafting it from scratch, but we'll see how it goes. I suspect that I won't actually have it completely perfect as a pattern by the time I do this video because I've only got a week to do it. But yes, at least it'll be a very good uh, twirl mock-up. Anyway, enough of my banter. It's time to get on with making some stuff. Let's go. The first thing that I made for this video was the birch vest. Like I suspected, it's definitely too long in the waist for me. I have a really, really short torso and long hips and legs. So I'm just working on the vest pattern now and I'm really worried that it's going to be too long. I'm really short waisted. So I've had a look at it based on my um, Cardia corset, which is short waisted. And <laughs> so this is technically the waist, <laughs> but my waist is up here. So I just want to check it against the vest I already own. Yeah, I'm going to have to shorten that it's about that much which I then need to transfer up to here and actually use the shortened length of lines there to move it up and I'll need to do the same on every other piece that I'm going to do which is why I'm not going to use the facings even though I wanted to because that just seems too hard when I've got to do all this adjustment <laughs> I have a really really short torso and long hips and legs so um, yeah a lot of patterns are too long in the waist for me anyway but this was very long in the waist so that's the first adjustment I made and then I made a mock-up using calico and from there I discovered that there was a lot more fitting issues okay so trying on the twirl it's okay it's not perfect it's a bit of pull here but that could also be because the um, like there's still seam allowance around the arms and stuff like that. But it's too big in the boobs. <sighs> Even that's a big up and not big enough in the hips. Need to take some out of here. Like there's just, there's quite a lot of space here. That's just not, that's not useful. Um, and a little bit out of the bust as well. And I think maybe even a smidge just out of the waist, just to give it a little bit more shaping. 
Oh, it's lunchtime. I plan on getting this done by 10 and it's been two hours longer just fitting and fitting and fitting. So for this vest pattern, I've had to do a lot of adjustments. Like almost every single seam I've had to adjust, which is why it's taking me so much longer than I thought. It doesn't mean it's a bad pattern. It just means that my body, my distribution of sizing and where things come out and when things go in in my body is different to the block that's used by um, a pattern scout which is based off her body um, so we just have really different body types so the way that that pattern works for her doesn't work for me I don't mind having to do adjustments but it is a little bit harder when you have a time constraint like a video whoops <laughs> it's all adjusted I'm not sure if the lining is gonna fit now because I adjust it again just just tweaked it a little bit, but I have a feeling I'm gonna have to either remake the lining or maybe add some little bit of piecing inside it just so it sits where it needs to. Generally speaking, when you're making adjustments, what you should do, and I didn't do, <laughs> what you should do is that you should go from the top down doing just one or two at a time so that you can see how that affects the fit of everything else. I didn't do that because I'm on a time crunch trying to make a video. So I made probably too many adjustments and then they altered each other and how everything fits. Uh, also another thing, make sure that you don't do the absolute rookie error of wearing different bras when you're trying it on. If you're gonna be wearing a bra or if you're a person who wears a bra, make sure that you do that. Cause yeah, you can get yourself in trouble if you don't. I'm excited about the fabric that I used. I got the fabric um, on clearance from Fibersmith. They had a warehouse sale and I got that. So I've put together my toile and I've made my adjustments. So now I'm gonna do the second, hopefully not toile, <laughs> which is my lining. If it doesn't fit, then obviously I'll have to go back and adjust more and make a new lining, but hopefully it fits and it's fine. And then I can just make the lining and then make the proper outside part and stick them together. appointment at the hospital for my lungs um, so I lost several hours uh, in the middle of the day which really sucked so now I am very behind I also had a lot of fitting issues with the vest but it's pretty much done I just have to add the buttons but cardinal rule sewing do not do buttons late at night I'm very tired and I want to go to bed but I know that if I don't use my time tonight that I'm not gonna get it done in time to do a video this week. Tonight I'm going to cut out my um, Dawson top, Helen's closet Dawson top. I originally I was going to use my really beautiful um, merino that I got from the fabric shop, but fabric store, fabric store from New Zealand. But I'm too scared to use it and stuff it up because it's a mock neck and because my horrible posture I don't have much of a neck, so I don't really want to test that theory out. So instead I've got some just basic cotton jersey. Um, so I'm going to use that instead and hopefully I can spend a little bit of time tomorrow and if I have to maybe a little bit on Wednesday finishing the skirt because it's my own pattern so it has not been tested yet. At least the vest is done and it's very cute. I'm very happy with the vest. It's, it's really nice. I've got to put the buttons on and this was going to be my placement but I don't actually have buttons big enough to make this make sense. So I have to choose between these ones which are slightly bigger and have four holes which is more secure but they're slightly grey. Well, these ones which are a lot more black. They've only got two holes. And they're a little tiny bit smaller. And I don't know what to do with them ones. Oh, very different look. I know they're freaking buttons, but you know. Hey, 
So it's the next day. Last night I managed to get my top all cut out, my Dawson top. So now it's time to sew it together. And then I can make the skirt, which we'll see. Um, I think I'm gonna do like a bit of a twirly thing, maybe. Uh, there it was, the Dawson top. Um, it's a knit stretch garment, so I thought that, that would be okay in terms of um, forgivingness of the fit. And it actually was, which is really great. I first had to do a small bust adjustment. So this means that you need to cut from the bottom straight up to the bust point, from the bust point out to under the arm, making sure that you're taking into account the seam allowance, and then through what would be the dart. Though as a knitted garment, this doesn't have a dart point. So once I did that, then I just shift everything across um, inwards, yeah, I did a centimetre, which is about a quarter of an inch. Um, so that across, um, that should be just about enough. I think I probably could have taken in just a little bit more than what I did. Um, but it's fine. It's knit. It's cool. I love some of the really great tricks and tips that Helen gave in this pattern. It was, I was a learning experience and I loved it because it's just a simple t-shirt. But actually she had heaps that I didn't know. And yeah, it was great. It was a great pattern to use. I highly, highly recommend it. I actually have no idea where I got the fabric for the Dawson top. I just have it in my stash as like a giant roll, probably from Spotlight. Um, it's a, just a giant roll of jersey that I have in there for many things. Cause I, like I said, I like wearing black. So that works for me. Trying this little trick from the instruction books with Helen Closet. Snip halfway, and then separate so that you get less bulk. Really. Fold it over. Yeah, it does. Definitely got a lot less bulk. That's cool. Thanks, Helen. I've just realized that I have neither enough calico nor enough poplin to actually test the skirt before I make it out of my nurse fabric. So that's annoying, which means I have to go to Spotlight again. <sighs> um, so I'm gonna cut out the pattern because um, obviously my hair isn't really appropriate for going out in to me. You might, rock it, go for it. Then I'm basically, I'm just gonna have to go out, which sucks, I don't wanna go out. I hate going out, I hate going outside. Um, into the world with the people, but I have to do that. I have to get some stuff from Officeworks anyway. <laughs> I'm back. I have calico. I also got some poplin in case I want to use that. And exciting, I managed to get more of the lace for Gaia. Now I can actually finish it. Hey. The last thing that I made is the skirt and I made it last because I drafted the pattern myself. That's it. Exactly why we always do the twirl. Um, skirt fits really nice, but the waistband is too tight and too wide for my body, so that needs to be adjusted. Apart from that, what a good! I like the flare. I didn't think I would, but actually, I think it's really nice. So I think I worked out what happened. Uh, I had printer issues this week, which affected the scale of my patterns. And like a dumbass, I decided not to reprint, mostly because I have no ink and I can't reprint, um, but I didn't quite foresee how much <laughs> the scale got changed. So thus my skirt was a bit tight. Anyway, make sure that you check your scale when you print things uh, and that your printer isn't malfunctioning. Basically what's happened is that I don't, <laughs> I don't have a wide enough fabric basically once it comes out. So I've taken off a bit, um, both the front and the back, 
So hopefully, hopefully that will be enough. So annoyed at myself, I put this on the wrong piece, the, into, I put the interfacing on the wrong piece, so now one section of my waistband has double interfacing. Yeah. But I'm, I'm not going to recut it, no, no, get bothered. Make sure that you stay stitch on every single curved um, hem and seam, ask me how I know, because I stretched out the waistband, that's how. Someone who's good at sewing would probably undo this and redo it so that it actually does match up. But I'm not going to do that. And you don't have to either. Don't let people bully you into thinking you have to be, do a good job. You don't. Just make things. Okay, so this part of the waistband is only basted so I can just pop that on there and sew around it and that's done, technically. Okay, so I've already got technically three more steps to go. Um, I've got to do the hem, I've got to do the closure, but first I have to finish off the waistband. So I've attached it right side to right side, and then I now need to fold it over and fold this one over and then fold that under, and then I can stitch it. Yeah. Ta da! I almost pattern matched again. God damn. All of this seam allowance needs to be ironed up into the waistband. I think I'm in love with it, but I did a terrible job on the waistband. So, yeah. so I'm going to unpick that because I did a terrible job with that. I chose for the skirt not to finish off the hem. I know, I'm very naughty. He's a very naughty boy! I finished it off in that there's hemming tape in there, but I didn't finish it off properly. The practical reason is that some of the skirt is cut on the bias, and when you have fabric cut on the bias, it will grow and skirts in particular do that and long skirts with a lot of heavy fabric will definitely do that and this one will so there's no point in doing it properly when i know that i'm gonna have to recut it and redo it so there's a temporary solution there and then i'll fix it up properly the other one is slightly more selfish i think that i actually would prefer this to be a shorter skirt i think more like just below knee length or maybe even sort of a midi length would be better it's good i still have many concepts and ideas and and things that I want to think about with this. That's a problem. I still have other things that I need to tweak and change um, and whether, work out whether or not I want to have pockets. Big question. Should I put pockets in this pattern? Would you prefer to have a pocket option or would that change the lines of it? And would it make a difference if it had darts as to whether or not you want pockets? All oh, the questions. But no answers yet. So let me know in the comments what you think. They have it. Outfit's done. Ready for me to try it on.
Overall, I'm really, really happy with this. I'm really happy with how the look came together. I'm happy with the outfit as an ensemble. And I'm also really excited about how all this stuff is gonna fit into the rest of my wardrobe. Thank you guys so much for watching. I've got some videos linked after this that you might enjoy. Uh, and yeah, see you later. Thanks for coming. It's really nice of you to come and have a chat. I don't know what I have to say. Mm -hmm. I don't know. So don't over just your things. I hope that's it.